The problem with the secondary bevel is that over time they get bigger and bigger and bigger or they get steeper and steeper and steeper. There's four big problems with most sharpening techniques. They're too complicated, they don't work that well, take too long, and my biggest pet peeve because it destroys workflow is that you regularly have to regrind the primary bevel with a bench grinder or a honing guide. This technique is so simple, you guys are gonna love this. This is the drawing of a plain blade with a single primary bevel. It'd be a little bit harder to sharpen the full bevel on a wide blade like a plain iron. So instead, I sharpen a slightly steeper bevel right at the edge called a secondary bevel. The problem with the secondary bevel is that over time they get bigger and bigger and bigger, or they get steeper and steeper and steeper. In either case, you have to grind back down to a single primary bevel using either a bench grinder or a honing guide. To keep the secondary bevel thin and easy to sharpen, I first hit the primary bevel with a coarse grinding stone, and then I sharpen the actual cutting edge, the secondary bevel, with a finer honing stone. I'm gonna demonstrate this using oil stones, which is what I usually use to sharpen chisels and plain irons. Then I will show what changes I make if I'm gonna be using diamond stones. This method works just as well with water stones, and in fact, you can get a sharper edge right off the stone with water stones. I just can't stand using them. I know a lot of people love them, and that's great. People swear by different things to use on oil stones, but you can't go wrong with 3-in-1 oil or Norton's honing oil. Spread the oil around a little bit, then locate the primary bevel by clicking it down onto the stone. Hold that angle, it doesn't need to be perfect, and then just sharpen the blade. Don't push down too hard, I kind of think about keeping the blade in contact with the stone, but not pushing it into the stone. It's going to be a little bit hard to notice, but I am going to round off the edges of the blade, which adds what's called a camber to the iron. The goal here is to keep the secondary bevel thin and manageable, not to sharpen all the way down to the cutting edge, which would create a burr of metal that rolls over the very edge. I don't feel a burr, and that's just fine. Next, I spread the oil around on my honing stone, and as I find the primary bevel, I go up just a little bit steeper and sharpen that secondary bevel. Now I can feel a definite burr on the back of the blade. I thought you'd be able to even hear that, but that didn't come through in the audio. A sharp edge needs to be worked from both sides, so now with the burr on the flat side of the blade, I put that down on the stone and go back and forth a little bit. This will push the burr back over to the bevel of the blade. To remove the burr and end up with a sharp blade, I use a strop with green honing compound. The burr is right now on the bevel of the blade, so I'm starting there, and then I'll flip it over to the flat side. When I finish with this, I'll feel for the burr from both sides. If I don't feel it, then it's gone. Uh, if you have new diamond stones, they're crazy aggressive, so you'll probably easily be able to see what looks like a little wire string that falls off. And as you can see, I'm not the kind of guy who wastes a shop rag. Now for diamond stones. On the coarse stone, I'll grind the primary bevel. On the medium stone, I grind the primary bevel and add a little bit of a camber. And on the fine stone, do the secondary bevel, then feel for a wire edge, and then do the back. Then you move on to the strop, and with diamond stones, it's important you got to strop at least twice as much as you would with oil stones, or the blade just won't be that sharp. If you don't already have any sharpening equipment, you might be surprised at how well you can get along with a combination oil stone and a strop. This is the most cost-effective way to get a very functional sharp edge on your plane blades. And later, when you want to be able to peel off see-through, super fine, translucent shavings, just add a nice Arkansas stone or a high-grit water stone to this setup. Having a slightly rounded or cambered blade helps in three ways. One is it eliminates plane tracks. If you have the sharp edges and they're not rounded at all, you can imagine that as this plane goes through the wood, you're going to have little grooves showing exactly where that plane went. And you'll be able to feel it with your hand. If it's slightly rounded, you may be able to feel a little bit of a scallop, but that can be taken care of with a little sandpaper or a really light shaving going over just the scalloped part. Two, it makes it easier to push the plane through wood. If it's cambered, you're taking the thickest shaving right in the center, slightly less on the outsides. So you're not removing quite as much wood, it's slightly rounded. Some other things can make it difficult to push, such as just going against the grain. Some woods are harder than others, 
but if you're having a problem where when you're trying, trying to plane the wood, it's getting jammed and stuck and just giving you a difficult experience, try cambering the blade a little bit. And three, it actually helps you be able to square an edge. With a cambered blade, it's gonna be taking out the thickest shaving right in the center, and it's gonna taper off to no shaving all the way at the ends. If you've got an edge that's out of square by a little bit, then you shift the plane over to the high side. This way it's gonna be taking a thicker shaving on the high point, tapering off less shaving on the lower point, and that can actually help you square the edge of a board. Now we need to put the blade back on and get it adjusted, slide the blade onto the chip breaker, some people call it the cap iron, and I bring it up close to the edge, finger tight on the back where that screw is that holds the cap iron onto the blade, and once it's finger tight and in a good spot, then I'll bring over the plain screwdriver and tighten it up. If you've got really challenging tear out prone wood, then you could slide that up really, really close. The blade's barely protruding, but for just standard practice, a 32nd of an inch of the blade protruding from the cap iron works just fine. Now with the blade in the plane, the whole blade is sticking out way too far, so I'm gonna back it off. And as I back it off, I notice that I can only see the blade sticking out on the right, and I do not see it sticking out at all on the left. So I'm going to push that adjustment lever towards the high side. And when I do that, I don't see the blade at all. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheel so that the blade will stick out further. And that looks pretty even to me. It looks even left to right, the blade sticking out, so this thing's ready to go. If you need to, you can check by planing the edge of a board to make sure the left side of the plane's not taking off more than the right. If you're new to hand planes, please be aware that these are final thin shavings. If you tried to flatten a board with that light of a shaving, it would take you all day. Alright, thanks guys. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see y'all in the next one.